Welcome to the Featured Anime Podcast. I'm your host, Jack. And I'm Rick. And today we are talking about Katsugeki Token Rambu. Now, this was my choice uh, through my wonderful random selection, although I kind of wish it wasn't my choice because it was just, <laughs> it was bad. Mistakes were made. <laughs> A lot of mistakes were made. Uh, so what's interesting about this one is it's, name is probably better suited for time traveling weapons that are now people. Yeah. And just as confused as you sound that that's about as confusing as the plot is. Unfortunately, I don't think they, they, they workshopped it too much to be honest. No. And honestly, I mean like that, just that is a pretty good premise for the whole show. And on top of that, it's actually based off of a video game, a browser based game called Token Rambu, which came out two years earlier in 2015. And a week, I guess a few weeks after they uh, decided that they were going to make the animated series, they decided to make a manga and the manga is still going on. So hopefully it makes more sense. But I doubt it. Well, the, <laughs> I don't know. It, it must have some kind of following because there is a um, second season in the works for the anime um, and a movie. <laughs> as you as you brought to my attention at the very end of the last episode that we have available to us currently, they're like, hey, <laughs> fourth wall break. We're making a movie. Yeah. Well, long story short, the premise of the, the anime is you have, I would call them named weapons only because they, they seem to be of importance to that specific point in history, although not all of them, which it, it's, it's not consistent in who gets a soul or which weapon decides to get a soul and which one doesn't. So that part's kind of confusing too. Um, but basically, there are bad weapons who got souls who want to go back and change things or bitter that they lost or well, something, we don't I guess. know that they're bad weapons. I mean, like, we don't know how they came to be or their origination. I mean, like, I guess actually you could say they're weapons too because they're summoned the same way. It is stored, sort of gets stabbed in the ground, lightning or whatever else comes up and poof. Yeah. Yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, here I am. Um, the the reason I I I, I name them the bad guys for right now is because the perspective of the anime is off of what we consider to be the good swords who are fighting the retrograde army who are trying to go back in time and change things for whatever reason to alter the course of history, and they're. The, the the main characters, Izum, uh, Izumi, I'm just going to, I'm, I'm just going to abbreviate the names just so you know, I'm going to go with Izumi, uh, Matsu, Hiro, or, or sorry, Hori, Yagen, Tombokiri. Yeah, that's what we're going to go with. And, and keep on, that's, that's the abbreviation you're giving them. The, 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 the real name is... <laughs> Much more difficult. Oh, and uh, Suru. We're going to go with Suru because, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I am horrible at names. I'm, I'm horrible at names. And this is just these names don't make it easier. I'd like to point out that you are, uh, in effect, naming majority of what we would think is the main characters. The, the, yeah, actually, those are the main characters and they are swords. And one of them, actually, two of them are known with each other. So uh, Kunihiro uh, and Izumi, they actually had the same master, as they put it previously. They both were the own, owned by a particular character. And it really doesn't come into play until the last, like, Three episodes, four episodes. Yeah, if that, they don't really. The the importance seems to be lost a lot of the time. So the whole 
purpose of this show is t- for these characters to maintain the course of history with some slight variations throughout it. And it mainly takes place in uh, the 1800s is what it usually yeah. ends up being for some weird reason. Like because that's the key pivotal points for Japan for history altering stuff, I guess. You know, it makes no sense because at that time they also had gunpowder. So how come guns didn't become have lives and stuff like that? Well, I mean, like you could technically say that uh, Mutsu, he uh, he he was both the sword and a gun <laughs> that came to life because he uses a gun. Yeah. So yeah, semantics, semantics. Yeah. I mean, like technically he was just a sword, but he came back with a sword and gun. <laughs> so sure. Why not? I mean, because like yeah, he's sense. two halves becoming united as one. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. know. Th- that's how confusing know. this show is. That's in all well, honesty. That's how confusing it is. They tried to go complex and they didn't do a very good job because I would say maybe halfway through, you really can't tell if the people you're following, the viewpoint you're, you're seeing it from, are the good guys or not. And they talk about how the time retrograde army is actually a lot more powerful than they are. And they don't know how, you know, how they're able to do certain things or, or a variety of, of other situations. So they alter time. What are they doing? What their main purpose is. Now, the interesting thing, and I'm going to point this out is during the last episode, you have, uh, Kunihiro talking to Izumi and he says for the, because Kunihiro wants to alter history and wants to save his master or at least change it. So that way Izumi gets to be with his master when his master dies, because that's all inspiring and super important for them. But, uh, he says, because he ran away and he's been living on there for three years. He says, I've been trying, I've been staying the course of history. I've been fighting the time retrograde army and I found out what their plan is. And then he just leaves it at that. And then he's shocked by the retrograde army showing up in such massive force for the final episode. It's like, wait, didn't you just say, didn't you just say you spent the last three years battling them and that you learned what their plan is and you're surprised by this. Let's how about you you take a couple steps back and you tell me what this plan is by all means, please tell me what this plan is because I would love to know what the plan is because no one knows what the plan is. Not even the time retrograde army knows what the plan is. Yeah. And again, there's no, I'm not going to say there's no bad guy because there's, there's definitely a bad guy, but there, there's no one who has the full plan. And I, I spend, uh, God, how long I spent maybe six episodes trying to figure out the hierarchy, who's more powerful than who, who's listening to Hugh, where these orders are coming from. But so they, they, they say, so like in the first episode, you had um, the their new master, and I forget his name, so I do apologize. Um, he does show up at the end of the first episode, which brings in the other main characters at the exact same time. And it it kind of just makes it lackluster. In what way? Because I didn't see it as being all that important. Because he just shows up and he's like, hey, by the way, I understand you guys are kind of going through a little bit of a hard time right now. Guess what? We're going to introduce all these other characters and give you no context as to what the hell's going on, even though it's just still the first episode. OK, I got you. Yeah, it, it, it felt like they were trying to rush by rush the introduction. Like, hey, you need these people. Why? You'll you, you will. You'll figure it out. Yeah. And, you know, then they also show these giant massive clouds and war poles and things like that appearing over wherever they are for the army. And, and it's like, how it's like, is no one else able to see this? It's like, right. It's like, it's an early warning system. Use it. 
Yeah, it's like you see this going on up there. You're, I mean, like the time retrograde army and our main protagonists are able to interact and change and mess with and everything else. How come no one's like looking up and going, what the hell is with that giant hole up there? What's with the lightning coming down and people just like spontaneously coming into existence? Well, you know, reasons. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll go with that. And, oh, man. and so they take the time and they, they, you're following this group and they're the second unit. And so you learn that the second unit is like maybe a 10th of the strength of like for all of them combined. It's like they're maybe half as strong. If that, as one of the guys in unit one. Yeah. Why would you send the B team when the A team would kick butt? So, I mean, like I understand they need to go through, they need to get their, uh, things together. You know, they need to, you know, get strengthened and stuff like that. But it's like, when you have a, it's like, we've never encountered a precedent like this and there's going to be a thousand guys showing up at the last one. And you're only sending like half, half, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, you don't send <laughs> it's like in real life terms, you don't send an apprentice to go do a master's job. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's exactly what ended up happening. I mean, like, I don't know. And then they take like two, three episodes out of it and they show them where they actually all stay. But apparently everyone doesn't know everyone, which is like kind of understandable if everyone's always out on missions and things like that and you know, whatever <laughs> else. I would have preferred if they if they took that episode and like grew upon it, like made it alert. Oh, you're so and so. Oh, I heard of you. Didn't you do that? And like do a flashback to the mean super badass. Yeah. Uh, and then, oh, how did you do that? Oh, you're you're new. You don't really know how to awaken your skill yet. This is well. This is how you typically would learn. Yeah. You know. But you also had these like random ass boxes. That were that looked like they had food constantly on the corners of their mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a bit annoying. It's like, OK, everyone's walking around. They're supposed to be part of the era or whatever, but they are dressed outlandish, which is kind of a red flag if you're trying to blend in to save history. And then you have a weird looking animal that's multicolored with dots and drawings and a metal bell. That's also a camera and everything else that's around its neck. Like, you how is this not, holes. how is this not noticed? You shouldn't poke holes. You're, you're being, you're being very anti era. I'm not being anti era. I'm just still confused. One of my, another thing that really confuses me is like, they they just ended the or not just ended the first episode beginning of the first episode it's they're chasing after one of these time retrograde army individuals they kill him they make a reference to buried treasure and then they're on this car and they're <laughs> rolling along and then he goes what's today's date the fourth and he pulls out his book and it's only been like 24 hours oh yeah no that boat should definitely be showing up here today history is on track. How do you know history's on track just from a boat that obviously was on route way beforehand to be there on the fourth? Well, you know, see, because the retrograde army didn't win, that boat didn't hit that cataclysmic tsunami style, uh, you know, wave. And so obviously because that didn't happen, you're killing me smalls. <laughs> you're killing me. <laughs> I am all for time traveling, time sci-fi, pick your flavor of how you want to word it show. All right. I'm all for what this is, which is an action fantasy historical samurai show. What I'm not for is horrible, horrible, horrible storytelling with major massive plot holes. What I will say is that for what it is, the animation wasn't complete and utter garbage. The animation was good. The animation was decent. It could have been better, but yeah, 
It could have definitely had a little bit more detail. Yeah. Uh, but it was good. It was better than, than what it could have been. Do you think they had to do stuff on the fly? Like, Hey, this episode is going to be about this. Well, how did we get here? Well, because we really don't have too much to go on, we're going to wing it and hope it makes sense. No, I think what they were trying to do was trying to stay, stay along the lines of they are jumping from time to time to time, you know, so they're in one year to another year to another year to another year to handle these specific events. However, how you're transitioned in between the events and what's going on and the camaraderie that's going on in between everything is lost. And so you spend three or four episodes that are taking going from one event to another that's seemingly within a week of each other. So you should have a better time to bridge what's going on than what they did. It's Fair. sloppy is what they did. Lack of forethought, probably. So I, I, mean, I mean, like I'm guessing they said, well, because they're traveling time in time and all they're doing is trying to prevent these key historical things from being disrupted. I, I get it. I mean, I, I understand like the need and want for them to like have to go throughout there, but how, if it's not cohesive or done in such a way to where it makes sense, or at least so there's a, a consecutive story all the way throughout, then it's kind of lost. I can see that. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's just me trying to be, I'm not even going to say supportive because that's not the right word, but yeah, they definitely could have could have done better with, with what they were given to work with. So, yeah. And what do you think they could have done better? I mean, like if you had to critique it, it besides I mean, the story and, you know, making it actually understandable, that's what I would have done. I mean, like I would have made it a more cohesive story. I would have made it more understandable. Like I get what they were trying to do. I really do. I understand it. It's just the the way they went about it was just wrong. And also, I'm not going to lie. It was a fight for me to stay awake. It, the story was bland when there was story. I, I agree with that. Unfortunately, I, I, I <laughs> see where you're coming from and agree with that. The fight scenes were decent. The fight scenes did make me think it, was, it, it had potential to be a, a type of shonen. But given everything that's not what i thought yeah no it definitely had the potential to be a shonen um so i mean it's 13 episodes long and i don't have much more to say about it because there really isn't much to say about it well let me ask this will you be watching the uh <laughs> will you be watching the movie if if the movie comes up on the next random selection, then yes, I'm not going to willingly go seek it out to watch it. I'm not even okay. going to willingly go out and watch the second season. If there's a second season that comes out, if it ever does truly come out. Okay. So don't look forward to it on this channel is basically a, a consensus for showing up here unless it shows up at a random. Yeah, basically, unless it, I mean, like, you know, our luck, it'll probably come up as a random anyways. Knowing our luck. Knowing my luck. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I mean, like, I would love to continue to try and talk about this, but honestly, it's like we're beating a dead horse. There really isn't much to say about it. So how about we just go straight into a into a rating, sir? Zero to five. How would you rate it? Probably about a three. Oh, no, no, I know. Uh, no, see, that's too generous. Um, I'll give it a two. All right. Yeah. Any positive notes on why the two? Because they tried. <laughs> I've seen anime that, that just didn't try. They didn't give anything. So there was decent animation. They at least paid for that. Story had potential. Execution was done all wrong, I think. Yeah, that's basically it. Execution was done all wrong. What do you think? I think I will give it a two as well. They had the potential. The voice actors were great. Some, uh, you know, the that's honestly one of the highlights of the show. The fact that the 
voice actors were not that bad. They were actually pretty good. Some of them are, are in uh, shows that I'm actually wa- watching right now. Um, that those are the highlights. Those are the positive points uh, the animation's clean. It could have been better, but the animation is pretty clean. The story it's, it's very lacking when it, when I, I, I can see there's the potential, but it okay. is really, really lacking. It sounds really hard to see. I got you. I am curious now if you had the opportunity, um, would you recommend this to anybody? No. Not at all. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> harsh, harsh. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I mean, like, honestly, this show doesn't even make me want to check out the game. It's, it's really, just, yeah, it does not make me want to check out the game. And I'm a gamer. I love games, but this drives me away from the game. I can see that. I can, I can definitely, unfortunately see that. What about you? No, no, I would not. All right. Fair enough. So, next week is your choice, sir. What are we watching? Next week's choice is Gargantia on the Vardis planet. Verterus? Verterus. Yeah. Verterus planet. Okay. All right. Uh, I've actually Uh, seen this one, and it's a pretty good one. So, yeah, it looks to be like a... uh, a Gundam-style action adventure. Okay. Taking place in the extreme future. It does take place in the future, but it is not so much Gundam. In fact... No, I thought thought because of the Mecha. No, Mecha plays a part of it, but it's not very Gundam-like. That's fair. That's fair. I'm just looking at the the artwork on it. No, no, fair enough. I don't want you to get your expectations up and thinking that it's going to be a lot of action pack uh Gundam fighting stuff it's it's not that it's gonna have some decent story oh okay not to say that Gundam doesn't but yeah it, it'll be good it'll be a nice change of pace for you all right uh, compared to what you, you're normally watching <laughs> you know you know me and my slice of lives oh yeah um <laughs> well that's all we have for today um, join us next week for the next review. If you have seen our next choice, pre- any of the previous choices or anything else, or if you have a recommendation, reach out to us. You can email us at featured anime podcast at gmail.com. You can tweet at us at those anime guys. We even have a voicemail link in our show notes. Feel free to reach out to us. Be happy to respond to your questions on our next episode or with any of your thoughts. And until next time, I'm Jack. And I'm Rick. Later. Later.